whether people want to admit it or not, they're balancing the need to get the economy going with the safety of people. And I don't think that's a balance. I think the science tells you when businesses can reopen. With me now is Wayne County Executive Warren Evans. Warren, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Give us a sense of what's been going on in Wayne County the last couple of, of days. We know the number of cases in Wayne County is high as it is across Southeast Michigan. What are the, the biggest things that you guys are grappling with right now? Well, uh, the major things I think right now is you know hospital capacity uh, and morgue capacity or capacity uh, hospitals and funeral homes in terms of the numbers of bodies. Uh, the uh, count in Wayne County yesterday of deceased, I think, was about 47 people. Uh, it's a pretty big count. Uh, uh, and the count's been growing. I mean, in the last few days, it's interesting, the number of new cases has leveled off significantly, which is promising to look at. Uh, but the people who have been in bad shape in the hospital for longer periods of time, I think, uh, are expiring at a rate that uh, is a little scary. So to be able to have uh, a, a place for the bodies to get through this and give the hospitals the room to continue to do what they're doing uh, is one of the, the really significant issues. Uh, one of the other ones is uh, just getting accurate records uh, so that when this is over and, you know, God willing, it will be over and be over soon, uh, we'll have the appropriate data to extrapolate from this. My biggest, not biggest fear, but one of my fears is uh, that we lose information, information relative to uh, the race of people, the information relative to what hospital uh, they came from. I mean, all of that data is going to be really helpful for us to try to prepare if there's such a possible thing uh, for the future. And, and we're, we're getting better at the coordination to get it done, but it's still not perfect. So let's go ahead and talk about that. What is your office doing to coordinate data um, that's happening county level and then also coordinating it with, with the state? And, and who have you engaged into doing that? Well, we've engaged the hospital. We've certainly, hospitals, we've engaged uh, our health department. Uh, and I brought in some uh, data folks to help extrapolate uh, information. I, what I what I noticed early on was we would see uh, information like 34% uh, uh, of the deaths were African American, 24% of the deaths just as it's roundabout for certain days um, were Caucasian, and then you'd have 30% race unknown. Well, you know, you, you're never going to make any sense out of that until you figure out what's going on with the race unknown, and so. Oftentimes, it was the appropriate box wasn't filled out when it was submitted, and you could go back into the case notes uh, and extrapolate that, but in some cases, you can't. Uh, and so, you know, we're just trying to make sure that we do all the follow-up we can so that at the end of this, there's actually real data to uh, plan for the future. Let's talk a little bit about, I think, the cases that people are watching are in the nursing homes, occurring in the nursing homes in, in Wayne County. What kind of communication have you had with the operators of, of some of the nursing homes in terms of either helping out the staff there with more PPE or more testing of residents of the nursing homes and the staff there as well? Well, both of those are things that uh, emergency preparedness, for example, with Wayne County has worked towards trying to get the PPEs necessary uh, for first responders and all of those folks, and you kind of go down a checklist. I mean, we really didn't have a checklist necessarily for, uh, for nursing homes, but clearly when we have enough inventory and when we had enough, we want to share it with everybody uh, that needs it. So, you know, that's, that's, that's one of the things. The other is our health department uh, kind of giving some case follow-up uh, and to look at nursing homes and just what protocols they have in place. What do they have in place to see if there's some way that we can assist them with social distancing issues and other sorts of things to the extent we can. So we're trying and we know they're trying also. 
Um, let's talk a little bit about the conversations that are already happening about, uh, you know, opening up the economy again. Do you think that we need to have those conversations? It's too early to have those conversations or what would you like to see included or what we have to take into consideration before we talk about that? Well, I think the biggest thing is the, the, uh, the issue of and whether people want to admit it or not, they're balancing the need to get the economy going with the safety of people. And I don't think that's a balance. I think the science tells you when businesses can reopen and not, you know, I'm certainly a strong advocate for helping businesses and we've been committed in a number of ways to doing that. But the reality is that we open too quick uh, and start to have the numbers go up again. Actually, the long-term impact on business is gonna be more significant than if we just kind of bite the inside of our lip and hold on until the healthcare, healthcare professionals uh, can give us a sign about going forward. And then it has to be staged. And so we should be planning to reopen now, but not planning with an end date, planning with the programming necessary. Uh, so when we do open, the, the stores are safer, uh, people going back to work are safer, those sorts of things. So uh, I'm inclined to not know when the date is. I'm very happy that uh, our new cases every day are kind of plateauing. Hopefully they drop off, but they haven't dropped off yet. So, I mean, I don't know if they drop off or if they spike again, but I think we need to be prepared. And the preparation needs to be based on the science and the health of our citizens, not on uh, economic concerns. This obviously has taken a significant amount of resources from the state level all the way down to the county level. And we heard uh, Mayor Mike Duggan talking about possible cuts and, and budget issues coming for the city of Detroit. Um, with um, hazard pay for deputies, for uh, refrigerated trucks for the morgue, for all of the things that the county has had to, to um, pay for and put out during this pandemic, do you see cuts coming? And what can you tell us about the financial health of the county because of this? Yeah, I think everybody's uh, getting hit hard. Uh, I'm just so glad it's, it's not the Wayne County of five years ago, uh, but the Wayne County of today, which is, you know, uh, much more financially stable. Uh, we're going to have budget cuts, uh, but hopefully those cuts can come from a number of areas short of personnel. I mean, because of uh, the pandemic, I thought long and hard about uh, a reduction in workforce or laying some people off to keep the budget balanced. But... The reality to me is there's enough pain and agony going on now that people did not need to have that fear ahead of them uh, in the near future. And so uh, our people have been furloughed, non-essential people have been furloughed and paid for uh, going on three pay periods now. And I'm prepared to go uh, a little past that if we have to, but depending on how this shakes out, uh, there could be reductions in the workforce. I'm not contemplating that yet, but we're certainly looking at all of the departments to reduce budgets uh, as best they can, contracts that aren't going to be uh, uh, culminated, those sorts of things. You know, we've had conversations uh, over the years talking about the Southeast Michigan region as a whole. And you talked about if, at least this wasn't the Wayne County of five years ago. And I think that everyone countywide could say that. But now we've entered into this entirely different era. What do you think that coming out of this is going to mean for Southeast Michigan? And um, what do you anticipate or see as the potential pitfalls as a region um, moving forward for us? Uh, I don't know if I see specific. Uh, things that would make uh, our region uh, tougher than others. Once the country gets back to work, I mean, I think our manufacturing relative to automobiles and, uh, you know, our manufacturing will be something that would pick up reasonably quickly um, and we could move forward. I, you know, we're not huge tourism people, of course, if you're, uh, you're a part of downtown Detroit, you cringe when I say that. I mean, it's certainly important uh, to the region, but it's not the whole economy. Uh, and so I think those things may pick up a little, uh, a little more slowly, but I think people going back to work manufacturing, I think we'll, uh, uh, we'll get through it okay, and I think we'll be smarter as a result, and that's always a, a good after effect. What is your concern, though, for some of the small businesses in Wayne County that's, that they may, won't be able to come back, that they won't have the resources to, to, um, to open back up again? What is being done, I guess, at the uh, county level to shore up some of those small businesses? 
Yeah, we've had a very, very significant uh, both grant and loan program. Uh, loan program with TCF Bank uh, that's made available funds to uh, a number of businesses that have already received the money because that's one of the big things. Bureaucracy is like turning around a, you know, a, a, a yacht as opposed to a speedboat. And so we were able to uh, put together a program where money between ten and fifty thousand dollars for small businesses, uh, you know, to make their rent payments to the extent they could keep employees on uh, that's been successful. And we've had thousands of applicants, which certainly shows the need. Uh, it's about a $10, $10 million worth of funds uh, along with TCF, uh, which I feel good about. The number of loans that have been approved, the number of people have gotten money in their hands now. Will it take care of everybody? No, but we got on it quickly. There also have been uh, uh, grant programs uh, that the county has not as significant in dollars, but certainly helpful. Uh, and so, you know, we're, we're doing a number of things to try to make money available. And we know there'll be federal programs and other sorts of things, but again, it's the speedboat versus the ocean liner. How fast can you turn it around? People need money now. The businesses need money. And I think we're reasonably successful in that regard. Uh, but it is going to be tough for a lot of, uh, a lot of businesses. And I hope Hope we wait long enough so when people get back out, they don't have the apprehension about spending money in the businesses, about you know the number of people in the store, fears of a lingering impact of the coronavirus. So uh, I'm optimistic. I think we worked really hard to deal with our small businesses and we were smart enough, I guess in hindsight, to really ramp up our economic development department about six months ago uh, and so we had the people and the resources out there, and our focus has always been on taking care of the businesses we have first before we look into business expansion. So I think we've developed decent relationships with our, our county businesses, and we've been there to help. All right, before I let you go, last question. What, uh, what are you going to be focusing on for the rest of the week? Anything that we need to know about? No, just trying to keep track of... of you know, the same issues to figure out the trends, to figure out uh, what our budget projections will look like, to figure out what we'll need to do uh, to be able to balance the budget. Wayne County is not going back to, uh, you know, the, the business practices of six years ago. It's just not going to happen. And so we will balance the budget. Uh, but the quicker we make uh, certain mental changes and certain changes to the bud budget, the less painful it will be. Uh, overall. So I'm optimistic. I'm certainly glad that we've been able to keep all of our county workers on the payroll uh, so far. Uh, life's rough enough without worrying about um, how to pay your rent or your mortgage. And so uh, I'm optimistic and hopefully, uh, and everybody's been working closely together. I have to say that the relationship between uh, Wayne County and the city of Detroit and Oakland County has been great. Uh, uh, and that helps too. It's, it's bad enough when you have a tragedy or, a, you know, a serious situation, but it's so much worse if uh, communication lines uh, aren't crossing properly. All right. Well, Wayne County Executive Warren Evans, it's good to see you. Be well, and um, we will be following up with you soon. Thank you so much. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.